Hello, all. This is Pastor Andre Downing, better known as Pastor D of United in Worship, coming to you from our studio here in St. Louis, Missouri. We want to come to you with, with what might be Sunday school for, for some who are up at 9 a.m. in the morning with us on today, or maybe in the afternoon or the evening. This may be Bible study for you. At whatever time that you come to us and you, you are able to join us in our virtual studio here, we want to give you the Word of God. We want to take you through a, a walk through the Word. We want to unpack this Word so that you may have what you are, what you are in need of equipped for your day. We want to start out on Sunday where your mind should be rested and, and where you are, are not at work or maybe you have gone to work today, but you just need something from God that's going to help you make it through the week. We're going to be coming to you from the, uh, the, the standard uh, Sunday school lesson, the King James Version. This you can get uh, online. You can get it at David C. Cook. It's a standard resource that they provide. I've been using this uh, for years. You can go to www.standardlesson.com. Again, you can go to www.standardlesson.com so that you can get your copy of this. I don't sell these from the church. You can certainly get your own, but we're going to we're gonna walk you through the word of God on today, and we want you to, to join us with a word of prayer. If you're ready, bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today. We are thanking you, O oh God, for who you are, for what you've already done. We are thanking you, O oh God, for how you have blessed us and how you have kept us. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to make it through the week so far. And for those of us who are watching this on the weekend, on Sunday morning or midday or evening or afternoon, we thank you, O oh God, for getting us through the week and allowing us to see this day that you have set aside, that you are the Lord of the Sabbath. And we thank you, O oh God, for who you are and for what you're about to do. We ask that you open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits, oh God, so that we may be able to receive what you have for us on this day. We pray, oh God, that you would help us, oh God, to be in the mind frame, to receive your word so that we may be able, oh God, to, to take this word and, and apply it to our lives and to see you as you would have us to see you. Only you can reveal, for your word says, the secret things belong to God, but that that is revealed is for us. We ask in you that you would reveal unto us, oh God, your purpose and your plans and your desires for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you for these and all things. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're ready, let's get your smart devices. Let's get your Bibles. Let's get, get whatever you use to get the word of God. And go with me to Acts chapter number two. We're going to be reading to you from verse 32, 33 and 37 through 47. Let me say that again. We're going to start with Acts chapter number two, starting with verse 32 and 33. Then we're going to jump down to verse 37 through 47. If you're ready, let's go. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall, I, shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Verse 41, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together 
and had all things common. Verse 45, and sold their possessions and goods and, and parted them to all men as everyone had need. And they continued, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Uh, the title of the Sunday School lesson of our Bible study today is Praise for Salvation. Praise for Salvation. We read Acts chapter 2, verse 32, 33. Then we jump down to 37 through 47. I'm going to take some time to just really kind of unpack this word for you all today. We, we want to look at the key verse. The key verse here is Acts 2 and 42, which says, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayer. They continue steadfastly. Praise for salvation. This, this, this month, this quarter, the standard uh, lesson Sunday School Lesson Commentary is focusing on praise and focusing on worshiping God and focusing on giving God the glory for who he is and for what he's already done. He is a good God. I know that you can say that with me. God is a good God. And the response would be, yes, he is. When we look at the word that's coming to us on today, it's talking about conversion. It's talking about Conversion, conversion, such a strong word because it, it, it's, it's different than just change, right? It's different than just change. It certainly implies change. Change is part of conversion. But when we look at the word conversion, it has a very specific yet simplistic meaning. What does it mean to convert? It means to be changed in one's thinking, in one's mannerisms or behavior, and one's direction, conversion, to be, to be converted or to be changed over to. That's what conversion means. If, if you're going down one path of thought, to be converted means that you've changed over to a new path of thought. You are converted. You're not just converted because you may have read something. No, conversion also implies that there is something that has inspired you to think differently, act differently, behave differently. Are you with me? Conversion, true conversion, is means, means that you have been inspired to think differently, to act differently, and to behave differently. Watch this. Small changes don't cost you anything. But to be converted is a major change in ideology, in psychology, and in physiology. Simply put, conversion is a complete overhaul for one who goes through it. it causes you to think differently, act differently, behave differently. Conversion. This is what, what the, 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 the Acts chapter 2 is talking to us about. You know uh, Acts chapter 2 because at the beginning of the chapter, it talks about how the disciples were in the upper room. And it talks about how that, that the, 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 the Holy Ghost fell upon everyone. And it was like a fire of cloven tongues that sat upon everyone. You're familiar with that. But as we get down into the meat of chapter number 2, we're looking at people who who had come to see, to, 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 to come to participate in the Passover. This was, was a regular occurrence uh, in our day. It's, it's going to church. And, and a lot of these people who have, have, had gone to the Passover, they had been doing it for years, for generations. They, they had been taught how to go, go to church. They had been taught all of the, the religious duties of the church. They've been taught how to bring a sacrifice. They, you know how to go to church. You, you know how how the liturgy of the church goes. There's praise and worship and there's offering, there's preaching, and then there's 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 a, a, a call to the altar. You, you've been familiar. Maybe you, you grew up uh, in the church with your, your mother, your grandmother, your auntie. Maybe, maybe you've been a an attender of church all your life. Maybe you just got here and you're seeing these events as, as we've kind of described it. I want you to understand that what's really happening here is we have gotten used to going to church. 
But conversion is a rare occurrence. Conversion is a rare occurrence. Yet God, God sees you. He, he knows who you are. He, he allows his spirit to guide you. And he, he allows you to have all of the various experiences that you have. But God wants something specific from you. So he knows when you are just right, when you are just in the nick of, of, in the midst of situations and circumstances, and he wants to reach you. This is why you feel the need to go to church, even when you don't want to. Have you been there? I've been there. And you feel the need to go to church, even when you don't want to go. It's only God pulling at you, uh, 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 bringing you closer to him, because there's, there's something that he wants to say to you that will cause a conversion, a change in the way you think, in the way you feel, in the, in the, and in the way you behave. He, he wants to see a full conversion. That's why he sends his word. These people and Peter and James and John, they, they were the disciples of Jesus. But on their, this day, they were even converted from just being disciples to apostles. They, 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 they went through a conversion. And so Peter, you know Peter. Some of you may not be familiar with him, but Peter was impetuous. He, he was flippant. He, 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 he did things uh, uh, with a good heart, but at the wrong time. If you do things at the, at the wrong time, even, even if you mean well, it's still wrong. So Peter was the kind of guy, impetuous, that, that he would, he would, he would, he would speak out of turn. He would, he would do things in defense of what he loved, but it was just at the wrong time. And, 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 and the case of Christ going through his, his, uh, crucifixion, uh, Peter denied him. Jesus told him he would. Peter said, no, Lord, I love you too much to do so. But when Peter saw the horrific situation Christ was going through as part of his crucifixion, he denied him. This is the same Peter who's speaking to these people today. Why would God allow Peter back? Because God knew his heart. Why would, why would, why would Jesus want Peter back after after he he betrayed his trust after he he had he had lied and denied that he even knew who Jesus was it is because Jesus knew Peter's heart there are some of you out there today I I, I know that you have felt like you have come to wit's end and things just haven't worked out the way you have intended or the way you desired. And in most cases you may not have even gotten the desires of your heart. And so you've made You've made do with what you've got. And in some cases, you may have even told yourself this is the, as good as it's going to get. But Jesus knows your heart. Jesus knows. Some of you may have, have left God. And you. It, it may seem like happenstance that you've come across this particular uh, 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 Sunday school lesson or Bible study. But I want you to know Jesus is still after you. He wants you. He, he knows your heart. He's even saying to you even now through these words that, that come on back home. Come on, come on back and find me. I, I didn't reject you. I, I didn't leave you. I knew what you were going to do, but I didn't leave you. You left me. So he's finding you through these words and saying, come on home. Peter, God knew that he would be able to use Peter at such a time as this to say the very words to others that Jesus had said to them. Here's what's interesting. Here's what's interesting. Verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Maybe you feel that your heart is pricked. Maybe you are feeling the presence of God at this particular moment. Maybe you are feeling the need to do something about what you feel. Let me stop Bible study in Sunday school for, for a quick altar call, for a quick altar call, because I, I feel the spirit of God is, is, is leading me to, to bring you back to him. So, so, so for those of you who may be feeling it, I'll do this again at the end, just in case some are, are just joining. But I, I want to take this opportunity to lead you to Jesus right here, right now. For so the Bible teaches us in Romans. It says, if you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus and, and confess with your, your mouth, 
Thou shalt be saved. If you believe it in your heart and you confess it with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. For those of you who walked away from him and, and, and maybe have been seeking a way to return, I, I, I want to extend this opportunity uh, uh, with you right now to, to, to say this simple prayer with me. Can you just bow your head and, and close your eyes and, and, and say this with me? Say, say, Father, here I am. I'm lost without you. I tried it on my own and nothing has worked out. But you allowed me to find this brother today on Facebook or YouTube or wherever I found him through your word and, and, and his words that, that, that he is speaking are your words. And I want to be made whole. I want to be saved. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you came through a virgin birth. I believe that you gave your life as a remission for my sins. And I believe you were resurrected from the grave by the spirit of God Almighty, forever seated on the right hand of God. Come into my life right now. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Sanctify me through and through. I want to be right. I want to be whole. Take my life. I give it over to you even now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, I believe that you are now saved. Click on the comment and, and, and tell me that you have received Christ in your life. Let your testimony ring out. Like, click on the like button, click on the share button and share this with others you know who are also seeking for Christ. Let us know, we wanna hear from you that you've given your life to him. Now I pray that you will find yourself a Bible teaching, Bible believing, Holy Ghost filled church where you will be able to continue to get the word of God. Oh, this is a great place. This, if, if we were at church, I would, Tell somebody to put their hands together and welcome you into the family of God, or for some of you to welcome you back into the family of God. Let me start through the rest of this lesson just so you can have some foundation here. You, I want you to understand that God has a divine plan for you. He, he always had, had had a divine plan. From the beginning of, of time, after man fell in the garden, God developed a plan. He devised a plan of salvation. For he said to, to the serpent in the garden that, 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 that the seed of man would bruise his head and that he would bruise his heel. The seed of man is Jesus Christ. God had a plan from you after the fall of, of, of Adam to get you. He knew you were coming. He knew that you were going to be seeking him. He knew this moment would come. And it's at this moment that he said, I want my message to go out so that people will understand and know that I am after them. I want to bless them. I want to do something great for them. If they will just come in and give me their lives. He had this divine plan from the beginning. He had it from the beginning. Run with me to Galatians 1, chapter 1, verse 4. I want to show you that. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 4. Galatians 1. Galatians 1. Galatians. Galatians. <laughs> Galatians 1, chapter number 1, verse 4. Watch this. Actually, I'm going to back up to verse 2. First one, let's just start at one, Galatians 1 and 1 through 4. Paul, an apostle, not of men and neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and, and God, the Father who raised him from the dead. Here we go. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches at Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God, the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. See, he gave his life. That was the will of God. Jesus said to, to, to uh, his Father that, that in Hebrews 
10 and 7, he says, Then I said, Behold, I come, and the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. Hebrews 10 and 7. Jesus, understanding the plan of God from the beginning, Watch as, as the lives of the children of Israel unfolded throughout the centuries and throughout the Old Testament. He said to God, before you, you fashion me a body, I want you to know, God, that as your son, I'm coming to do your will. It was written of me. It was prophesied of, of, of me in Isaiah and in Ezekiel and in, in Jeremiah. They, they prophesied that I would, I would come because they wrote it down, because they, they said it out loud, because it was declared before your people, I come to do that will. Isn't that amazing that Jesus, before a body was christened for him to come and occupy, he says to God, I, I want to be a part of this salvation thing. I, I want to be a part of your plan to win men back. See, the, the man was made perfect in the Garden of Eden, but then he fell and now he was imperfect and his life was shortened and, and, and man sought a way to get back to God, but couldn't find a way back. And that's when Jesus says, I'll be the way. I'll be the truth. I'll be the light. The darkness of this world comes to, to dim the senses and to take us away from, from who God is and to, to distract us from the very presence of God altogether, from seeking him by satisfying our lusts. And by lust, I mean our desires that can never be filled by just the things of the world. Have you ever eaten fried rice? It's popular here in St. Louis. I'm not sure about other parts of the country, but it's popular here in St. Louis. But when you eat fried rice, it's filling. But an hour later, you want something else to eat. You, and that's, that's the sin of the world. That's what the sin of the world does. You, you, you commit a sin to try to fill a void in your life. And, and you find yourself out there doing things you don't want to do. You know better to, than you should be doing. But you do it because you're trying to satisfy a, 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 a desire, fill a void in your life. But you find yourself empty even after committing that, that, that sin, and even after trying to satisfy that lust in a variety of ways, that, that unsatisfied desire, you're still trying to, to, to satisfy that. But Jesus says, I, I can satisfy it. I, I came for that purpose. I can, I can give you satisfaction that goes beyond all knowledge from the beginning of time. This was God's divine plan. Let's move on to the point number two. Here, point number two here is a promise is offered. So God didn't just make a, 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 a plan without a promise. God always has a plan. And along with that plan comes a promise. Acts 2, 37 and 38 says this. It says this. And Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There is the promise. Here's the condition. You want to do something different? You must repent and come unto God. See things from God's perspective. And if you do so, receive the promise, which is the gift of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. John 4, uh, 14, 6, and 26. John 14, 6, and 26. And I pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. There it is. There's a promise. Jesus said, I'm going to pray on your behalf. I'm going to pray unto God that he will send you something that will continue that satisfaction when I'm gone. Jesus has been gone over 2,000 years, back sitting on the right hand of the Father, but he sent the comforter because that's his promise. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you. Watch this forever. There's that satisfaction. That's verse 6. Verse 26 says this, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He, here is Jesus saying, the word of God is going to be preached unto you, and the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, will have a job to do. He's going to bring all those things that you've received received back to your remember. When you are tempted by the enemy, the Holy Ghost will bring back the words that you have received 
Because you've received the Holy Ghost. Now the Holy Ghost is a catcher of the words you receive. You see that? See how that works? Let me say that again. That was pretty good. See, see, God, God says if you repent, which you've done, we've said the sinner's prayer together, bless God's name for this opportunity for you to receive salvation or for you to be recommitted unto God. He, he you repent and, and you, you shall receive the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is nothing other than the word of God. So if the Holy Ghost is the word and you hear the word, then the Holy Ghost, which is the word, will receive the word and then bring that back to your remembrance. That was pretty good. Let me say that again, the Holy Ghost, which is the word of God, which is the, the which is spirit and truth, will hear the word and will recognize the word and will keep that word in you so that when you are tempted by the enemy, that word will come back up and remind you that you're stronger than this. You're better than this. You can go through this. This is not all that there is. There's another level of grace. There's another level of glory that God wants to take you to. But you have to receive the promise. And you, you receive it on the condition of repentance. That promise is the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. You heard it here. It will abide with you forever, which means it will stay with you until the end of time. God does not leave you alone. I, I'm starting to get happy right there. He won't leave you alone for the word of God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. This is the promise that he's offering if you will receive it. So we got a divine plan. We talked about that and how Jesus from the beginning of, the, of, of time watched the word unfold and watched the lives of God's people unfold and listened to the prophets as they prophesied of him. And as the word was captured and written down in the 66 books of the Bible, he, he said, I, I come in the volume of the books that it is written of me to do thy will, O God. I want to be a part of this plan of salvation is what Jesus was saying to God. And here he's promised after he came down through the, the loins of and, and, and through the the body of, of Mary, and through that virgin birth, he grew and made a promise. I'm going to pray to God to send you a comforter, the whole, which is the Holy Ghost. Well, let's get on to the end, shall we? Let's get on to the end. When you receive the promise that is offered, there is a divine change. There is a divine change. There is a divine. I want to take a little bit of time here to talk about what's going on with you right now. Since you've said the center of prayer with me, what's going on with you right now is an operation. And, and, and you won't know how much you have changed until the same circumstances come up and you respond differently. You see, in Ezekiel, the Bible says that, that God is going to do an operation. He, he's going to take the the, the the old heart away, the hard heart away. You know what a hard heart is. A hard heart is, is one that, that seems to continue to reject love and reject patience and to reject reject goodness uh, because uh, uh, to be cynical and to be critical, that's a hard heart. That it doesn't it doesn't have the ability to receive what God has. So God says, I'm gonna take that out of you. I'm gonna take that out of you, and I'm gonna create create a new heart, a heart of flesh, a heart of flesh that will receive the word of God. Isn't that interesting? Well, Brother Pastor, you just confused me. You said if I receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will receive the word. Yes, but the Holy Ghost has a place, has a has to do something with that word. And the, and the best way to do something with that word is to put it in the heart. But here's what David says. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you, that I might not forget you, that I might not go out and do something crazy because I don't have enough word in me. So he didn't have the Holy Ghost at that, at that point in time. The Holy Ghost hadn't yet come. But here we are. We do have the Holy Ghost. It is available to us. If you will receive this promise that's offered, then the divine change will take place. It will absolutely take place. Uh, Acts 42, 40, uh, Acts 2, 41. <laughs> then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. This divine change is a God thing. This is where he goes through and takes out from the heart the very thing 
that is, is causing you to reject him. And he gives you a heart of flesh, a heart that is soft enough to receive him. He's not making you soft. He's making your heart soft to receive him. Your job is to guard it with all diligence, to be protective of your heart, not to just give it away to anybody because it's they sound good, they sound nice, but because they sound like they're going to do something good for you. The only one who deserves all your heart is God. The only one who deserves all your heart is God. I want to I, I want to start to close right here because we've we've gone through a lot in just just a little bit of time. I'm I'm really happy that that you have joined me on today because there's there's so much going on in our world, so much distraction, so many divisive uh, things that are happening across our world and across our time in our neighborhoods, maybe even our in our own families. God God wants to do something special for you. And, and and I believe that you are able to come not just by uh, uh, this, this, this video offering on today, our virtual studio, but, but, but you stopped and you stayed with me. And so in this particular time frame, we, we want to we wanna make sure that we let you know that, that praise for salvation is in order, that God had a plan of salvation for all of us who would receive him that his plan of salvation came with a promise. And if we receive that promise, we will undoubtedly experience the divine change. Let me say that one more time. We have to be thankful and grateful and give God praise for salvation. For salvation isn't just getting you out of something that you're in. Salvation is changing the very way you think, changing the very way you walk, the changing the very ideology of your life. Whatever circumstance or situation that you've grown up in, how, however you've been exposed to whatever you've been exposed to, God is saying unto you today that today is the day of salvation. Right now is the acceptable time. For those of you who may have joined us late, we went through the sinner's prayer, but I want to make want to make sure that you have an opportunity. Let's go to our virtual off, uh, altar one more time, because it deserves for us to see the word of God and to hear the word of God, to give our hearts to God. And say this with me, Father, here I am. I'm no good without you. I belong to you. Your word says that it's not your will that any man should perish, but that all should come into the knowledge of salvation. Because of this word on today, I have received it, and I believe wholeheartedly in you. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean. Make me new. I receive you on today. My heart has been pricked, and I know that you're going to be operating on me to give me a new heart. I believe it all in Jesus' name. Now wash me, cleanse me, sanctify me, and I'll be careful to give you the glory and the honor, both now and forever. All right, let's say amen. I thank you for joining me for Sunday school, or if you're seeing this at any part of the day, that it's Bible study for you. Thank you for joining me. I am Pastor Andre Downing, better known as Pastor D of United in Worship. Hey, before we get out of here, I got some good news for you. We will be returning to in-person services here this fall. More information is to come, but if you're in the St. Louis area, if you live in the St. Louis area, we want you to come join us at 5001 Washington Place. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108. We're targeting October 17th for our restart. We come back often as this week we will make sure that you understand uh, all of what's going on so that you can be with us. Uh, we're targeting the time frame of 3.30 p.m. 3.30 p.m. 3.30 p.m. We want you to meet us at the Temple, 5001 Washington Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108, 3.30 p.m., October 17th. God bless you. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. We'll see you next time. God bless.